I've been avoiding answering this question. I find it very difficult to uh, recommend specific hardware to people blindly because I don't know what your needs are, nor do I know what your budget is. So most of the time people say, hey, what kind of equipment should I use? It's kind of hard to state because I don't know what your needs are. I don't know what kind of camera you're using. I don't know what you typically shoot. And I don't know what things you want to have access to. So it's very difficult for me to just blindly give you recommendations because I wouldn't, I wouldn't feel good uh, giving you recommendations that might not fill your needs. For me personally, whenever I spec a computer, I kind of do my specking the same way that Google did theirs in their early days. I don't ever go for the highest of high end because most of that stuff has significant uh, diminishing returns when it comes to priced performance. So I normally just come one tier down from there. And what I found is that most of the time I have a pretty solid uh, piece of equipment for two to three years. And then when I upgrade, I'll do the same thing. And what typically happens is if I wait two to three years, the new hardware is really fast. If I would have purchased the high end stuff then, top tier stuff then, it's not going to be able to even compete with, you know, the upper mid tier right below the top tier of the three year, you know, newer equipment when both of my purchases equal what that older unit would have been. Now, you know, if you have the budget to get the top tier stuff, well then get it. You don't need this video, just go and get everything, you know, the best of everything. But most people don't have that ability or they don't see the need for that higher price stuff. So then it really comes down to what are your needs? Are you just an editor? Are you looking to go into color? Are you looking to build large fusion projects? You know, each one of those has particular things that are needed to do really well in that. So like if you're an editor, you typically need to know what codecs you're gonna be working with because then you have to know, do I need really fast hard drives to deal with the data rates that, you know, the camera that I'm using? Or do I need to have a stronger uh, CPU that can work with these really compressed codecs? So that would be for like an editor. If you're going into color and you want to have like the best of the best, so you want to have like, let's say a 4K monitor that supports Rec 2020 and, you know, then you need to have these monitors that are calibrated monitors, which get kind of expensive when you're doing 4K uh, Rec 2020 and you need to have a graphics card that outputs that. A lot of people get one of those, but don't have the other. So then it, they're never really seeing the 10 bit or 12 bit. So that is, you know, another consideration. And then if you're getting into doing the stuff in fusion, well, you're going to need a significant amount of Ram. If you're building really big projects where you're compositing a ton of different elements. So your needs may vary. And that's one reason why I personally like PC over Macs because you have the ability to build the machine however you need it now. And then if your needs change, you can just add on to it and you know make your computer better and you know swap parts out. But some people don't like that. You know, you they like the ecosystem of Macs, and that's perfectly fine. You know, you buy your Mac and you can't change anything on it. And you know, when you're ready to upgrade, then you upgrade, right? That's kind of how the Mac ecosystem works. Except for, if you haven't seen yet, uh, Blackmagic put out a, they refer to it as an eGPU. It's an external uh, graphics card that you can plug in and it gives your computer uh, more horsepower. It's, I think it's mainly for like laptops that have uh, integrated graphics, but they're not that great. And this is to, prolong the life of machines and to, you know, give your machine an extra oomph when it comes to your CPU or your uh, GPU compute power. I mainly stick to Windows and I mainly get the stuff right underneath the top tier. And my needs are mainly based around needing a lot of fast hard drive space. I shoot stock and I put it up on, I think I sell on six different um, sites. And when I go out and I shoot, you know, I shoot hundreds and hundreds of gigs each shoot. 
So I bring it back and I'm shooting, you know, three to four times a week. So it's just hundreds and hundreds of gigs and I need to have that stuff and I don't ever get rid of data. So I'm always just accumulating all of this footage and data. So I need to uh, be able to store it quickly, you know, get it off the card, store it quickly. And then I need to be able to access it very quickly as well. So those are my main things that I personally need. So then I do a little bit of color to all of my footage. So that looks good to put it up on the marketplace. So I, I do a little bit with color. And then, uh, you know, there's some things that I, I need that really isn't uh, dealing with uh, computers, but I need like high speed internet and stuff like that to be able to upload that stuff to all my different sites. So I'll quickly go into the recommendations for DaVinci Resolve. There is a um, PDF that Blackmagic produced. The link is in the description if you're interested in it. It's 55 pages long, so have fun reading that. But it simply goes over the stuff I'm talking about with the things to take in consideration when you're picking components for a machine and then their recommendations that they have. When they put this out, this was at the beta of uh, DaVinci Resolve 15. So some of the stuff, like if we go into like the Windows machines, the stuff that they have here, they're recommending to get the Ryzen Threadripper uh, 1950. There's actually a newer generation of that chip. So some of the stuff in here, there might be better alternatives than what's listed in here. But this is the newest recommendation uh, list that I've seen. The stuff that's in here is going to be a bit more on the pricey side because it is higher end components. You could use this as like a little cheat sheet and you know work your way down to fit your budget. If something seems really expensive, you might be able to come down a little bit. Uh, one thing, a couple of things that I wouldn't budge is if you're going to be building brand new, I wouldn't get anything under like a 1070 because they've been out for a couple of years now. A lot of them are coming back onto the marketplace. Now that cryptocurrencies are kind of, you know, fading away for, for miners, those are coming back onto the marketplace. So you might be able to get a good one. I didn't really look much into the new like 20 series. That is one thing to keep in consideration. I would also not do anything less than 16 gigs of RAM. I would recommend at least 32. If your budget can support it, I would do that. Uh, when it comes to hard drives speed, I would get something, you know, quick. It, like I said, it really depends on what your needs are. I would say look through here. I just always found it to be very difficult to give people recommendations without knowing, you know, these couple of other things just because I've been around computers for so long and I really dislike when different YouTubers just say, you know, this is the recommended stuff to get. This is the best stuff to get when there's stuff that is far superior than what they're stating. The market's always changing. New things are always being added to the marketplace when it comes to technology. <laughs> Every month there's a new this or a new that. So it's kind of hard to keep up and give you like a solid list on the best price to performance and, and you know, all of those figures. But uh, yeah, I would take a look at this um, and then I can, the other thing everyone always asks is to see the hardware that I use. So this is what I have. All of this stuff is a completely different room. I don't have to deal with the humming, none of that. And then everything is just run over fiber to like my monitors, my panel, my keyboard, mouse, all of that is just done through um, fiber. It is a little on the expensive side, but it's like a one time you, you do it once and you know, you, you can just keep reusing all of those fiber components um, for when you upgrade. So my machine is a Ryzen 7 1700. It's um, one of their mid tier processors, I believe mid tier. Um, and now there's like a whole new slew of, of uh, stuff that's out there that's probably way better. And that was, you know, similarly priced to what I got mine at. Uh, I have a 1070, um, I've had it for a couple of years now because they weren't making new GPUs for some reason. Now they have like the 20 series, but I've been seeing a lot of people on 
the black magic forms stating that they're having issues with them and it could be just you know they're very new drivers so i don't know and then i have in here i think it's just like a 500 gig ssd to for the os and uh i have 64 gigs of ram of uh, ECC RAM, I believe. So that's what I have in that machine. Uh, and then down here is all of my storage. Um, it's a lot of storage. I believe I have close to like 40 some drives and um, they're all rated together in a RAID Z2, I believe it's called. If people are actually interested in that, they can look it up or ask me and I can make a video about it. But all this stuff is connected through a 10 gigabit link so the theoretical throughput is supposed to be one gigabit or one gigabyte per second, but you don't ever get that. I get right around eight to 900 megabytes per second, which is far superior than any SSD you could really get. I guess you could just raid zero a bunch of SSDs together, but you don't really wanna do that because <laughs> you lose one of them, you lose all your data. And with a, a setup like this, I can lose two drives and still not lose any data. Um, just pop two new drives in there and it recreates that data that was on those two drives, which is pretty good. And then I have all of this uh, backed up onto a, another unit in a, another location. Yeah, that's kind of it. Down here I just have the UPS. So if the, uh, the power goes out of the building, I don't have to worry about any of my stuff um, improperly shutting down. It sends a signal to everything and it starts a shutdown sequence when it gets down to 20% on the batteries in there. So hopefully you got something out of this. I don't know, but I get a lot of questions about it and I kind of came to the conclusion that they want some type of you know direction like these machines, 128 gigs of ECC. This is gonna be, you know, more than a lot of processors and GPUs combined, you know, this recommendation, but it is recommended if you're if you're gonna be using Fusion. But with that being said, let me know in the comments what you guys think about this one. If you have any other ideas or suggestions, leave them down there as well. Again, my name's JR and thanks for watching.